Singapore is just over 50 kilometers wide. That's a fact. But what if we told you that nuclear safety guidelines recommend an 80 kilometer safety buffer zone around a reactor? That means if something goes wrong, the entire island would be within the danger zone. That's exactly why Dr. Syed Alwi Ahmad, a theoretical physicist and member of Red Dot United, is sounding the alarm on nuclear energy in Singapore. On the 30th of July, 2025, Dr. Syed Alwi took to Facebook with a detailed and scientific takedown of the idea that Singapore is suited for nuclear power. His post was a direct response to remarks made by Rafael Grossi, Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, who recently called Singapore a most perfect example of a country ready to embrace nuclear energy. But Dr. Syed Alwi, who holds a PhD in physics from Virginia Tech in the U.S., thinks otherwise. In his words, the question isn't whether nuclear technology is advanced, it's whether it fits. And in Singapore's case, he says it absolutely doesn't. Let's look at why. First, emergency planning. According to U.S. safety standards, two zones are needed around a nuclear reactor, a 16-kilometer plume exposure zone and an 80-kilometer ingestion pathway zone. That's already a red flag. Singapore, being just slightly over 50 kilometers wide, has nowhere to safely place a nuclear plant that falls outside these zones. In short, no matter where you put it, the entire nation is at risk. There is no safe zone, no perimeter, no buffer. Second, storage of nuclear waste. This isn't something that lasts for a few years. We're talking thousands of years. To store it safely, a country needs stable land, plenty of space, and areas far from people. Singapore lacks all three. Any proposed site would end up near homes, businesses, or water supplies. And that, Syed Alwi argues, is simply unacceptable. That is a level of exposure no society should accept, he wrote. Third, evacuation. In many countries, if there's a disaster, people can be moved far away to safety. But Singapore's population density makes that impossible. There just isn't anywhere to go. The highways would jam, the shelters would be overwhelmed, and the damage could be catastrophic. Then there's the issue of expertise. Yes, Singapore has strong research institutions and has invested in radiation safety. But running a nuclear program isn't just about labs and classrooms. It requires skilled operators, independent regulators, emergency planners, and seasoned professionals with years of practical experience. And these roles need to be filled by locals. Syed Alwi argues Singapore doesn't have the depth yet and importing talent doesn't solve the continuity and trust issues required for such a high-risk operation. He also raised a less technical but equally important point, public trust. In a democracy, introducing nuclear power can't be done behind closed doors. It must come with transparency, public involvement, and long-term accountability. And right now, Syed Alwi says, Singapore lacks the experience of having this kind of open national conversation. Some may wonder, can't we outsource the risk, build reactors elsewhere, or send the waste abroad? But Syed Alwi shuts down that hope too. Singapore has no rural provinces, no outlying territories, and no friendly neighbors willing to accept radioactive waste. Everything would need to be handled within our own borders. That's an enormous burden for a city-state. So what should we do instead? Syed Alwi calls for more practical and sustainable alternatives. He proposes regional power grids, more solar panels, better energy storage, and continued investment in low-risk energy solutions. They may not sound exciting, he says, but they are responsible, and they fit within Singapore's physical boundaries. He ends with a principle taken straight from the laws of physics. A theory must respect its boundary conditions. For national planning, the same rule applies. Nuclear power, he says, breaks those boundaries in Singapore. As a member of Red Dot United's team that contested Nisun GRC in the recent general election, Syed Alwi had raised this issue even during his campaign. He called on the government to hold a national debate, involve the public, and prioritize transparency over technology when dealing with something this risky and irreversible. So here's the question for all of us. Should a city-state like Singapore even be considering nuclear energy? Or are we ignoring the structural realities for the sake of ambition? If you are still watching this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, 2230.